In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My sisters and brothers, I know it's getting old, but remember, it's the struggles of life, the struggles of life that help us to become more Christ-like. It's the struggles of life that teach us empathy for others who struggle and then to reach out to them with God's love and forgiveness. So we don't like coronavirus, we despise coronavirus, but let us become holier people as a result of it. And let's begin our holy celebration of the Eucharist, as always, by calling upon our God to give us forgiveness for our little sins. Lord Jesus, we join you in giving thanks to the Father for giving us life and new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we thank you for becoming one of us, for living among us, for dying for us, and for forgiving us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we thank you for continuing to forgive us our sins as often as in contrition we ask for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the spreading of your church crowned St. Peter Chanel with martyrdom, grant that in these days of paschal joy we may so celebrate the mysteries of Christ's death and resurrection as to bear worthy witness to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the Righteous One, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks, at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to Stephen's execution. The word of the Lord. Our response this morning during this Easter season is hallelujah. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. 
for your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. Hallelujah. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Hallelujah. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Hallelujah. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Alleluia. 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 I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, to be Christ-like, we must live like Christ. We must love and forgive all. In our gospel passage, Jesus tells us he is the bread of life. What is he telling us? Well, he's telling us this, that we Catholics are enormously privileged. The bread of life is communion. And when we receive communion, the body and blood, soul and divinity of the Son of God, He literally enters into our bodies, becomes part of our bodies, metabolizes into our bodies, becomes part of us, and gives us enormous graces to go out of the church and love and forgive all. Jesus is the Word of God. And the Word's words are also the bread of life. What Jesus teaches us, sustains us spiritually as well as physically. And what does He teach us? He teaches us the heart of His message is that we must love and forgive all the way our first martyr, St. Stephen, did, as we are told in our first reading. But we can do it and need to do it as well. Here's a modern parable. It's based on a true story. Ola Shari was 35 when the Nazis invaded Poland. A father was killed immediately, murdered. A mother was sent to Treblinka, where she was murdered. 
Ola went to Treblinka also, but she survived. After seeing thousands of people tortured and murdered, Ola was free. So she took her daughter from Poland to America. And when they got here, a reporter eventually asked her daughter what sustained Ola in the concentration camp. And her daughter said she learned not to be like the Nazis. She learned that she needed to become Christ-like. She needed to love and forgive all. And she did, including the Nazis. My sisters and brothers, to be like Christ, we must become like Christ. We must love and forgive all. Let us pray for Catholic missionaries. May God give them strength and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges and all who work in law enforcement, may God, the perfect judge, bless them with the gifts of wisdom, justice, and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who bear the burdens of loneliness, infirmity, poverty, or lack of basic necessities, especially during this coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. For the children in this community, may the Holy Spirit help them grow in grace and knowledge of God's saving power as they are lonely at home during this pandemic we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may Jesus accept them to himself and bring them everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. And now, in the quiet of our hearts, let us offer our own petitions, our own intercessions, to our infinitely loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God, we ask you to look deeply into our hearts. Find out exactly what it is that we truly need. Please give it to us and then give us the courage to do something beautiful with it. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, 
with such serenity and kindness, we pray upon these present offerings that they may fill with the blessing of the Holy Spirit and may stir up in our hearts that powerful love through which our martyr Why am I drawing a blank? Hold on. St. Peter Chanel may overcome every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. But in this Easter season, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, we offer you a pure sacrifice. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, which we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing 
the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Peter Chanel and all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters. And to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord, of St. Peter Shino. Grant, we pray, that we, who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son, may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father Harry and I pray for you every day. Pray for us as well. And as I said in my homily, let's use this struggle to become better, to become holier people. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace and love to serve God through each other. Have a wonderful day, everyone. <laughs>